Try to stiff rent money owed. Enjoy having your drug habit exposed and losing your new house. Hello again everyone. I've another story from my dad and he allowed me to share it here. Honestly, when I first heard it from him I thought it would be petty revenge but the consequences were much more than that. So I'll assume it'll be our pro-revenge material. The story. My dad had tried his hand in running out houses. Albeit it's only one house and he had only one renter. He's a soft heart and couldn't bear to force a family into the streets when rent wasn't paid. The renter was his work colleague, and they were acquainted at best this man would give every excuse in the book when he couldn't pay his rent, all of them relating to his toddler son, medical bills for his son, formula and diapers, birthday gifts, so on and so forth. My dad accepted these excuses allowing his colleague you to delay the payment and never once tried to deduct from the deposit. Six months later, his renter decided to move out. Turns out the jackass bought himself a nice terrace house out in a good suburban area. He knew my dad was a patient and generous man and decided to take advantage of that. My dad, in his words, was pissed but more than that, disappointed. He decided that he'll stop renting as he figured he would lose more than what he'll earn. Thus, the house was sold. A few days later, my dad approached his colleague wanting to know why he'd stiffed him of his rent money. This took place in the middle of the office with everyone still at their cubicles or milling around. Dad, colleague, I've heard you've bought a house. If you had money for the house, why couldn't we pay for the rent? Colleague, you know or not my son keeps falling sick. Ever since I stayed at that house you rent my son always fever. Always coughing. Dad, what has that got to do with me or that house? Colleague, I think I know why. That house is haunted. Got gin, genie, malevolent or mischievous. And Shaitan, devil, demon. You're a new Muslim convert right? Something must have been pissed at you for converting. Because of that, my son is suffering. For context, us Malaysians still hold on to some superstition. Though it's more prevalent in the older generations, be it due to culture or religion, superstitious beliefs are still embedded here. A rented house being haunted usually means little to no potential renters, and a sullied reputation. This ticked my dad off. At this point, Everyone had tuned into this drama being unfolded. Raising his voice, he laid down the truth bomb. Dad, I stayed in that house for two years with my wife and small children. Nothing happened. You know why your son keeps falling sick. When I went to inspect that house to sell it the whole place reeked of drugs. Every room in the house smells like marijuana. Your son keeps falling sick is because you smoke the drugs around him 24-7. If you ever been slammed by the truth so hard that it left you speechless. That was essentially what happened. Colleague was stunned, mouth opening and closing like a fish gasping for breath. Before turning around and walking away, my dad, having vented that, left to do his own business. Colleague not denying outright that he didn't do drugs caused the rumor to spread like wildfire with him ending up needing to do a drug test unsurprisingly. He failed that, which led to him being let go. Now you may think that the end. Drug use in Malaysia is seriously frowned upon here, even if you do it recreationally. Not to mention that other job prospects usually looked into your record and reason for resigning. Your last job, having being let go due to failing a drug test is an automatic resume into the bean. No job means no income. No income means colleague can't make the monthly installments for his new house. As my dad found out, it has been auctioned off by colleague's bank to another buyer. As he told me this, my dad never wanted to ruin colleague's life like that. He told me he should have just kept his mouth shut. That him knowing colleague was doing drugs in close proximity to his son was good leverage for colleague to pay his rent. It was in the heat of the moment, action and such. 
Dad never pressed to get his six months of rent money back. Considered it halal, meaning in his eyes, colleagues' debt to him was voided. I don't know. Perhaps this was just karma by God for colleague lying to my dad and stiffing him his rent money. Just needed my dad to be pawn in his plan to punish colleague in this life. The revenge was undeniably unplanned, but goddamn is it pro to me. TLDR. Renner stiffed my dad money owed for rent and blamed it on house being haunted. Dad exposed his drug habits in front of everyone in the office. Edit. Fix typos edit to to avoid the rule 11 strike. I've discarded the abbreviation of colleague to see. I would have tried to be the really petty person here and see how much the bank was selling the new house for. Turn that one into a rental property too. Kinda sucks that marijuana use causes such severe career ending consequences but the colleague should have been honest about trying to save money for a house down payment. He definitely abused your dad's generosity and got karma justice. We all have our burdens to bear. And we all have our limits. C used his son as a prop to effectively steal housing from your father and took advantage of the fact that your father has a conscience. It sounds like it didn't financially ruin you guys. Which is good. But C is in the position he is in through no fault of your father's. He reacted like a coward, running from responsibility at every step even with his new house. He was irresponsible to the seller, bank. Nothing your father said or did would have stopped C from ending up in this position eventually. In my experience, people like C specifically hunt for people like your father because they can spread the feeling of responsibility around and it gives them leverage to take advantage. I am no one to be giving advice to someone older than me and halfway around the world from me. But if I may be so bold I would suggest your father separate the physical and spiritual aspects of this. People like C do deserve compassion and understanding like anyone else. But they are not entitled to take and take and take from us. Some of us can only learn through facing the consequences of our own actions. If, when C starts taking ownership of his own life and his son's well-being, he will come to see your father's actions as having been necessary to his growth as a person. Beyond that, the old metaphor of, you can bring a horse to water but you can't force it to drink comes to mind. Wishing you well. Six months of rent, there is patient, and then there's letting them get away with damn near murder. At least it's over with. You don't need karma when you have incriminating evidence and drug tests to do the work for you. If he wanted to get his money out of the colleague, then your dad should have used that knowledge to press the issue privately. However, given the reluctance to pay in the first place, I think this is the necessary outcome. Drug use in Malaysia is seriously frowned upon here, even if you do it recreationally as opposed to professional drug users, who just do it for the money. I don't know. Perhaps this was just karma by God for colleague lying to my dad and stiffing him his rent money. Just needed my dad to be pawn in his plan to punish colleague in this life. Reminds me of a My Name is Earl episode. Earl Hickey. Maybe karma's behind this whole thing. Randy. I mean the guy finally got what he deserved. Maybe karma just borrowed my fist to give it to him. Randy Hickey. Because karma doesn't have fists. Earl Hickey. Well, karma used me to do its dirty work. Nice move. Karma. Nice move. Ah. As your neighbor country. Reading this story vibes so hard within my bones. Old person too soft it led to disadvantage. Religion stuff. Supernatural stuff. No drug stuff. Even the asshole renter that avoid paying but allocated the money for his own home? All check. Dang. We really are share the same roots. Up. I don't know about this being pro-revenge. All your dad did was be poor landlord. Didn't enforce rent or do inspections. 
and then just mention in front of the whole office about his tenant co-workers' actions. Other people just kept the ball rolling through no input from your father. But this is a great story and deserved to be told somewhere. Greetings from the Singaporean across the border. I actually understood most of the context in the drug part, so I think it's a pretty sweet revenge. Especially since the dude lost a full landed house. Slaps son in anger because he still can't figure out his standard four maths. Wife. How dare you lay a hand on our son. Husband. It's the gin. The gin made me do it. As he takes a huge draw out of his toilet paper rolled marijuana. As fucked up as it is you can lose your job and all future job prospects for smoking weed in Malaysia. That guy fucked himself up by refusing to pay rent and taking advantage of people. I have no sympathy for him in this case. OMG when I saw how you type the colleague's first dialogue. I knew you were either a Malaysian or Singaporean. Then when I saw the shaitan bit. I knew you were Malaysian. Hello neighbor. I hate to say it but the renter co-worker deserved that. No question abused your dad's kindness and likely hurting his son from the amount of drugs as well. Definitely not pro-revenge in my book as your dad did not willingly seek to cause him any suffering. But a good story nonetheless. TBH I expected the pro-revenge to be your dad and bought that house at auction. Drug use in Malaysia is seriously frowned upon here. Even if you do it recreationally. No kidding. I once visited as a kid and just as we were landing with the plane. It was announced, for those that were unaware, that smuggling drugs held the death penalty. Not something a young tired kid that suddenly worries if someone put drugs in his luggage wants to. Here. Hey up, what happened to colleague and his son after they lost the house? Eat the rich. 11. Exclamation mark. Capitalism bad. Exclamation mark. Exclamation mark. Exclamation mark. Upvoted for. 1. Malaysian. 2. Justice against assholes who take people for granted. Point 3. Your dad's patient's method of dealing with it until asshole used his family as an excuse. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our playlists full of similar content. Epicaracast is like doom scrolling for your ears. Please like, share, and subscribe.